selections, um, you must be delighted, number one, with the, the turnaround he applies in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. I thought, um, first half, I thought, I just said to the lads there, I thought we played a lot of uh, fingers crossed football. You know, we're just hoping to not make mistakes. We didn't take ownership of our own performance and uh, we were poor first half. I said to the lads second half, if we're going to get beat, at least get beat with a little bit of courage. I, I try and get on the ball and make things happen. And I thought second half we came out, we, we looked a lot better team. And um, you know, I thought we, uh, I thought we well, well deserved the the three points in the end. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we got better than what we were first half. Do you feel that your side in the second half played to the strengths of who you've got in your team? Yeah, absolutely. I, like I said, I, I just just thought first half, no one took ownership of the performance and they're just kind of waiting for somebody else to do it. I thought second half, I thought Kingsley James was brilliant, got on the ball a lot more for us, which allowed. Willow, Alex Wiles to get the ball and instead of the 40, 50 yards balls playing into Greg Smith, we were, we were able to pass 15 yard passes into him. There was less fight balls and then we got a lot more quality running off him. So yeah, I thought second half we took ownership of our performance and uh, yeah, a few untruths told at, at half time, you know, not in not in a shouty, screamy way because that's not how I not how I operate really. I'm not a ranter and, and a raver, but just said I expect more from the lads. Um, and they delivered. Um, the Greg Smith goal, well, there couldn't be a more typical Greg Smith goal, could there? I don't know what a typical Greg Smith goal <laughs> is, to be fair, because he scored all different kind of goals. But yeah, a bullet header at the back stick, I think uh, I think just about sums him up. But uh, you know, ever, ever since he's, he's came to the football club, he's been immense. And obviously you guys see what he does at three o'clock till quarter five, but he's, he's, um, his part in the dressing room is huge, you know, and he's, he's a real focal point of our play. And um, everybody hates Greg Smith unless he's in your team, and, and, and we, we love him. So he's been different class. Not lost a game since he's been here. Superb again tonight. How important is it to get to that 10 game mark of being unbeaten? Yeah, brilliant. Um, it's amazing, really, you know, because the start of the run was, for me, the worst performance since I've, I've been at games with Trinity. Um, we played away at Hyde. I think I said after it's probably one of the worst performances I've been involved in as a manager. But looking back now, it's the start of our, our, our ten-game run. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic, you know. And, and I think sometimes when things are going right, the manager gets all the credit. When things are going wrong, the manager gets all the stick. But I think for me, players win football games, you know. And the lads have got to take so much credit. We're out there on the dugout doing our best, but it's, it's the lads out there that win the games. That's why I told them at time, take ownership. This is your team. This is your run. You know, take ownership, and the lads do. I see the players celebrating with the supporters and all mm. celebrating together as they, they came off the pitch and there, there seems to be a real team spirit. How yeah. key has that been? Yeah, it's been fantastic. I just said in the dressing room that um, it's a pleasure to be a part of really, you know, and I, it, it's hard. Winning games obviously build, builds that, but also when, once you put a certain amount of characters together, we've got some real characters in there. Um, I think I'm a bit crazy, but I, I don't even think I make the top 10 in there. So <laughs> we've got, um, yeah, we've got a real good blend in there and I feel like the fans are really starting to buy in to, to what we're doing and it kind of feels like that we're, we're all on this all on this march together and who knows, who knows where it might end. Yeah, difficult place to come to tonight, difficult yeah. again at, at Buxton on Saturday, that yeah. will be a, another character test for you. Yeah, people. absolutely, um, be another tough one, they're all tough in this league, there's no gimmies in this league, every, every game you have to turn up, roll your sleeves up, do the ugly side of it and then like I said, take ownership, get the ball and try and play, so there is no gimmies, you know. Seven days ago, we needed 15 wins. Today, we need 13. So we're ticking them off one by one. Saturday, we'll be going to book some, trying to get the three points. Like I said to you before the game, if it's 1 1 with 10 minutes ago, we'll be, we'll be going for it, you know, because we might as well try and win and, and, and lose. There's no point in picking up a point here and that's not going to get us in. Wins are going to get us in there, and that's what we're going for. And overall, though, I know you keep saying about your players being good enough to stay up and they shouldn't be in a relegation battle. But going nine points clear tonight of yeah. the, the relegation zone, how important has that been? Yeah, brilliant. Like, like I said before, you know, there's no way this, this group ends up anywhere near the relegation zone. But it's okay saying it, you've got to go and prove it. And like I said, the lads are on an unbelievable run. And uh, yeah, nine points clear, delighted, but to be honest, it's, uh, it's irrelevant because we're not going anywhere near there. Congratulations tonight. Thank you very much. Well, that's uh, Curtis Wood.